Good evening. This is our Earth Day video. Um, I have two books today, and next week I'm going to do two more books. Um, because, just like with Reading Month, I don't believe Earth Day should be celebrated just for one day. So, um, for my books today, I have Dr. Seuss's Oh Say Can You Seed, and a book by Kate Messner called Up in the Garden, Down in the Dirt. Next week, my um, book, uh, my books will be The Lorax and um, The Tiny Seed by Eric Carle. Um, the Lorax is obviously by Dr. Seuss. So, um, here today I have these beautiful flowers, which will be, t um, which will be all over our library tomorrow for our grand reopening. Um, so, <clears throat> without further to do, my first book is going to be Up in the Garden, Down in the Dirt. Up in the garden, I stand and I plan, my hands full of seeds and my head full of dreams. Spring shines down to melt the sleepy snow. Wind whistles through last year's plants and mud sucks into or sucks at my rain boots. <clears throat> It's not quite time, Nana says. Down in the dirt, things will dry out and warm up. What's down there, I ask. Down in the dirt is a whole busy world of earthworms and insects, digging and building and stirring up soil. They're already working down in the dirt. Up in the garden, we snap brittle stalks, scoop rust, uh, rust, rusty armfuls, and wheel away weeds for the chickens. While they squabble and scratch, we spread compost over the soil. Anybody know what compost is? It's a good thing to practice all of the time, but it's a wonderful topic for Earth Day. Compost is all of the food, like fruits and vegetables and brown things and green things that we don't use or that we, or that go bad and we throw away. Leaves and brown cardboard and eggshells and old fruits and vegetables, they can all be stirred together and used as fertilizer for your garden. Down in the dirt, Pill bugs chew through last year's leaves. I give a gentle poke. They roll up tight and hide in plated suits of armor, roly poly around. Up in the garden, it's time to plant. I trail a furrow with my fingers and sprinkle seeds in a careful row. Give them a drink, Nana says, and we pat them to snuggle them into the dirt. Down in the dirt, a tomato, <clears throat> a tomato hornworm rests, waiting for wings and the leaves where she'll lay her eggs. Up in the garden, carrot plants sprout, pea blossoms bloom, wasps are on the prowl, and honeybees visit, legs loaded with pollen. I weed and wilt in the sun so strong, even Nana looks for, uh, looks for shade. Down in the dirt, the earthworms tunnel deep. I'm jealous of their cool, damp darkness. Let's see. 
get some shading cool. Up in the garden, rain shower, Nana turns the hose on me. I hide behind the cucumber vines, but their leaves can't save me. I shiver and laugh, drenched in Nana's rain. Down in the dirt, water soaks deep. Roots drink it in, and a long-legged spider stilt walks over the streams. There's the spider. I don't see the spider, but oh, there's the spider. There's the spider, and we got a cute little fuzzy creature guy here, and a dragonfly. Have you ever felt cucumber vines? They are prickly. Up in the garden, there's so much to eat. Ladybugs feast on aphids. Oh, those are good drawings of aphids. Nana crunches green beans. I bite a ripe tomato, warm from the, from the sun. Juice dribbles down my chin. Look at the, the ladybug eating the aphids over here. Actually, really good. I like these illustrations. Down in the dirt, a robin's beak finds a cricket, a beetle, a grub. Slugs are scrumptious too. Up in the garden, we pick cukes, which is short for cucumbers, and zucchini harvesting into the dark. Bats swoop through the sunflowers, and I pluck June bugs from the basil until it's time for bed. These illustrations are beautiful. Oh, there's the bat. Down in the dirt, skunks work the night shift. They snuffle and dig and gobble cutworms while I sleep. Up in the garden, a praying mantis wakes to hunt mosquitoes. Nana sprays the aphids and I'm, and I'm after the grasshoppers, ready to swoosh. But, there's the cute little grasshoppers, and the pretty mantis. <clears throat> Snap! Someone else is faster. Down in the dirt, a smooth, shiny gardener snake crunches on supper. Up in the garden, the wind grows cruel. Pumpkins blush orange and sunflowers bow to September. Nana ties them together to build a house for reading. Oh, I like that. Look at their reading under the, under the sunflowers. Down in the dirt, an orb weaver spy, spins her web, strands by uh, silken strand. She'll munch on moths tonight. So that orb spider. And she's already got a couple moths trapped in her web. <coughs> Up in the garden, colored leaves litter the the squash vines, and we know the cold is coming. Hurry, hurry, and harvest. There's enough for the neighbors, too. Down in the dirt, 
Frantic ants gather what we leave behind. They're storing food for cooler days ahead. Up in the garden, frost draws lace on leftover leaves, where secret eggs, egg sacs hang, waiting for the warm to return. We say goodbye and spread the winter blankets. Down in the dirt, beetles burrow, ants scurry home, earthworms curl tight in the dark. When Grandpa calls us in for soup, an autumn moon is rising. Up in the garden, dry corn stalks tremble and the wind smells like winter. But the long, ripe days of summer still rest in the garden beds. The ladybugs and bumblebees, earthworms and ants are hunkered down, hiding, biding their time. The squirrel in the branch are eating of the full moon. And then Grandpa is calling Grandma in and the little girl. And there's another squirrel on this branch talking to this squirrel over here. Dreaming of sunshine and sprout um and sunshine and blossoms and sprouts under the bare arms of trees and the blanketing snow, a whole new garden sleeps down in the dirt. Like curled up earthworm, some seeds that got buried by other animals, a bumblebee, an acorn that's growing. And that's the end of that book. Now we have Oh Say Can You Seed by Dr. Seuss. <clears throat> well, maybe it's not a Dr. Seuss book, but it is a Cat in the Hats learning library book, which is promoted by the, the, those who uh, read Dr. Seuss by Bonnie Wirth. Okay. <clears throat> I'm the cat in the hat, and I think that you need to come take a look at this thing called a seed. From the giant gum tree to this very small weed, every, flower plant, uh, every flowering plant started out as a seed. Plants are so useful to me and to you. Can you think of the ways I will name just a few? The paper for books and the cloth for your pants came from trees and cotton. That's two kinds of plants. The grains and the fruits and the veggies you eat, why, they come from plants too. And that, and here's something neat. In deserts and woods and rainforests thick, grow plants that can make you feel well when you're sick. Yes, plants serve us well and fill so many needs, and flowering plants all start as seeds. Just what is a seed, are you wondering, maybe? Well, you might say a seed is a tiny plant baby. The best way for you to see just what I mean is to take a close look at a seed called a bean. Like all seeds, a bean comes from three basic parts. Thing one and thing two, please bring on the charts. Part one is the first that I think you should know. It's the part of the baby that's called embryo. To sprout, it needs food, like you and I do, which brings us to seed part number two. It's called 
cotyledone cotyledon isn't that fun or say isn't that fun this bean ha seed has two but some have some others have one <clears throat> last comes the third part that you need to know it's the coat which protects our cute bean embryo so here's the embryo the cotyledon and here is the coat of the bean seed and to sprout to sprout a bean seed keep it moist but not wet keep it covered with dirt and then see what you get in seven or so days comes the part that I love a root spreads below and a stem shoots above so down here we have the root and then we have the stem And we're going to talk about seeds right after we're done with this book. Now, in order to show a grow, grown bean plant to you, we've traveled in time for some months, maybe two. <clears throat> and then it talks about the parts of a bean plant. Thing one, or thing two calls the part above ground, the sh uh, shoot system. <clears throat> Thing one calls the part underground the root system, which is very, very smart. So here we've got the root system and the shoot system. Down here are the roots. And up top we have parts of a bean plant, the stem, flowers, and leaves, and fruit. To get a good look at the roots underground, it is better to make like a mole I have found. Roots are not pretty, they're twisty and hairy, and some roots even look a little bit scary. Roots anchor a plant and help it stand true. Roots suck up the water and minerals too. And roots keep the soil from wa just washing away. That's pretty important now, wouldn't you say? So here we have varieties of roots. These are carrot roots, which some root or some plants like carrots and potatoes or what they call a tuber plant, and they are roots, the plant themselves. Um, then we have grass roots, and then we have giant tree roots. We've talked about roots. We have learned about them. Now it is time we moved on to the stem. The stem is a pipe through which water shoots. It is absorbed from the soil and passes up through the roots. It shoots through the plant, and next, as you'll see, the leaves turn. Uh, the leaves each turn into a food factory, just like the rhinos pr um, protected with horns. The system of roses is protected, or the stem of roses is protected with thorns. So rhino horn thorn, and then we talk about how the water goes up through the shoot or up through the root and shoots through the stem and then helps all the leaves open. And the leaves turn into food factories. If you've ever watched the Magic School Bus, you will know exactly how leaves grow. Leaves come in all shapes and all sizes, I've found. Some small, some, um, some spiky, some big, and some round. <clears throat> But the thing that all leaves have in common is this. They make their own food with photosynthesis. I'll say this quite loudly, but I don't mean to be rude. Or I don't mean to be rude, but there's different types of leaves. Plants are the only living thing on earth that makes their own food. To do this, plants need water, minerals, and sun, and that's why they, why the daytimes when food making is done. For your information, and also for fun, hop in my shrink upper and let's see how it's done. The leaf takes in CO2 through a stoma or pore. It works like a mouth, and that's what it's for. 
uh, then the air gets mixed in and, with the water and sun, and that's how the food-making factory is run. I see by my clock now, or that now is the hour to drop in and say hello to the flower. <clears throat> see, sunlight comes in and water comes in, and everything is absorbed. CO2 enters the through the stoma on the underside of the leaf, which stoma are like pores, they're like skin pores, and then oxygen is breathed out. So they take in CO2, breathe out oxygen. Plants breathe out a gas that we breathe in. The name of that gas is oxygen. This is like the food factory. Thing two has a chart. He will share it with you that shows what the parts of all uh, of a flower all do. In the pistil are vol or are are ov ovules. Ob ovules. They're on fertilized unfertilized seeds. The stamen holds pollen, which an ovule needs. The unfertilized ovule will not ever grow and pollen's the stuff that will fix that, you know. A flower's own pollen or another's or another's okay. That's where the bees and play a role, by the way. So we have parts of a flower. There's these pistils, um, the pollen tube, the, the stigma, style, and ovary are the parts of a pistil, and the stamen is anther and flament. The anther is this part right here is where pollen gets stuck, and then this is the tube it sticks onto. And the ovule are these little, like, plant seeds, and then there's petals. <clears throat> and bees are so important because they help pollen, and butterflies do it too. To make honey, bees need to get nectar from flowers. They fly and they gather the sweet stuff for hours. The pollen sticks onto their bodies and legs. It falls off and sometimes it reaches for the eggs. An ovule is, that's fertilized becomes a seed. Around it grows fruit upon which we feed. When we say the word fruit, do you know what that means? It means olives, nuts, grains, plantains, and tangerines. And apples and oranges and pineapples too. All kinds of plant foods are that are healthy for you. Some fruits are juicy and messy to munch on. Dry ones like nuts are nice to just crunch on. Not all plants with seeds give us edible fruit. Some plants have seeds that look weird or look cute. But seeds are hitchhikers. Burr seeds are hitchhikers that ride on your clothes. And dandelion seeds sometimes fly up your nose. Some seeds come in pods that explode like a sneeze. <clears throat> Other seeds may have wings and can fly on a breeze. So here's all the different kinds of seeds they just talked about. Dandelion seeds, the burrs. Uh, these are called uh, willy twirlies, I think. But whether they stick or, or they blow or they fly, seeds bring us life and now you know why. I see the sun setting and here comes the moon. Your mother is calling. Your dinner is soon. I hope you have learned from my little seed talk, and now I will climb up. I bet you that's a beanstalk. This giant beanstalk. The end. So here's a glossary of, and it explains what carbon dioxide is, the gas humans and animals breathe out, and which green plants use to make food. Uh, cotyledon, the first leaf or pair of leaves within the embryo, that a part of the seed that stores food. 
Edible means fit to eat. Embryo is the part of a seed that develops into a new plant, including the stem, leaves, and roots. Fertilization, when the male cells contained in pollen reach the female cells in the ovules and cause them to grow into seeds. Minerals are materials that neither animal are, that are neither animal nor vegetable. Found in rocks and soil, they can help animals or plants to grow. Nectar is the sweet liquid secreted by a flower to attract pollinators like bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds. Uh, ovules, the part of a plant um, in the ovary that contains the egg cells that be, um, becomes a seed after fertilization. Oxygen is the gas humans and animals must breathe in order to stay alive and which green plants produce when making food. Photosynthesis is the process by which green plants um, powered by the energy of sunlight combined with carbon dioxide and water to produce sugar inside their leaves and release oxygen into the air. A pistil is the ovule bearing female reproductive part of a flowering plant that includes the stigma, style, and ovary. Plantain is a kind of banana that is best eaten when cooked. Pollen is the minute grains that are produced when in the anthers of a flower and contain um, male sex cells, stamen, the male reproductive part of a flowering plant that includes anthers and the filaments that support the anthers. Oh, that was the end of the glossary. So, now, the last part of our video will contain seed planting. There is no craft for this video, but I should have a craft ready for next week's video of uh, of uh, Earth Day stuff. I might be including a Lorax specific um, uh, craft slash activity book. So I will be sending out emails to let everybody know. Okay. My last part of my video is me um, going to be planting some seeds. Um, First, we have a moist paper towel that, um, that you will put the seeds in. Um, I can provide seeds for you guys, too, if you would like to do this very same activity. So I have some marigold seeds that I'm going to put in there. Um, I might be doing more seeds next week because I want to try different seeds to see how long. Um, different seeds take to grow. Um, I mean, you can also look on the back of the package, but as an experiment and in light of Earth Day and just for the fun of it. So I'm going to take and put some seeds gently in the moist paper towel. You don't want it too wet because otherwise your plants will suffocate or drown. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with just four, four seeds. And what we do is we take them and we cover them. So they're all nice and moist in there, all covered. And then you take them and you put them in a little plastic bag. <clears throat> and that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do. And they'll germinate inside that bag in just a couple of days. They'll come right out of their little seed shells and, and they'll start to grow little tail roots. And then that's when you want to put them in soil. So I like to germinate stuff in bags because I feel like it's, it's fun to watch the roots start to come out before you put them in soil. You can start them directly in soil, but I have always thought that germinating them in a plastic bag with moist paper towel is, is way more fun and satisfying because you get to watch them grow a little bit first. And you do want to put them in a little plastic bag because otherwise your paper towel will dry out and um and then your seeds won't do anything so that's the video for this week i hope you guys have enjoyed it and we'll see you next week have a great week weekend bye